All right, friends, today we're working on my Uber Scoot. This is my 1600 watt, 48 volt scooter. I had it for a couple years, the batteries are dead. It comes with a battery pack that fits in here that is comprised of four sealed lead acid batteries, which these are kind of the old school way of doing things. Everything new is lithium. If you want to take a look at these, I've already disconnected them, but they are 12 amp hour, 12 volt batteries. They got four of them daisy chain, so you get 48 volts. They're very heavy. Um, I think this battery pack, gosh, I think it was like 40 pounds when it was all together. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but today we're going to be using this new, instead of a 12 amp hour, this is a 35 amp hour lithium battery. This is a BTR Power 48 volt, 35 amp hour pack comes uh, with your just raw cables here, no ends on them. Um, and then they send you some connectors that you can connect to hook to your scooter, as well as a charging port, a charger, which is still in the box. So we're gonna need a couple things. I picked up this kit. This is a new, newer product. Um, it's kind of a neat idea, if it will be one hand or not, but these are, uh, heat shrink tubes that have solder in the middle. I can see them. So they're uh, solder in the middle that'll melt and uh, also will shrink heat shrink around it. So that's kind of a neat all-in-one solution for this stuff. You want to get solder on these. This is pulling a lot of power through these cables and uh, you definitely don't want to just twist wires with wire nuts. You want to get some solder on there make sure you get a good connection. So I got a heat gun to do that work as well. If you look at the scooter, um, this is the connector we're going to have to cut off from the old battery and put on one of those new ones. The charge port is over here on the side. That's not compatible, so we're going to take this out and put in that new plug as well. So I took out the two bolts that were here. So this comes off. You can see the controller in here. This is the default controller whatever that model number there is. Kind of a wad of cables in here. I haven't dug too much into this yet, so I'm gonna see what I can see, clean out some of this grass that I've got in here. I used to use this off-road quite a bit. We'll get it cleaned up and uh, see what we can do about getting these cables connected. Getting a better look at the charging port the way this is now. This is riveted in place, so those have to be drilled out. It's glued on the back end, which is good for reliability, but I think we're going to cut these cables back here, drill that out, and then see about drilling out or cutting out a spot for our new charging port. One thing I did notice, these cables, I've got some wear spots right here where something, maybe the controller was rubbing against it. It's not gone through the insulation yet, but that is concerning. I mean, that's where power goes. Definitely don't want to short there. And I see you've got a plug in here. They've heat shrinked all their connections so they stay together, which is good. But I'm probably going to put some heat shrink over this just to get it some more insulation as well. Um, like I said, this is, that's just dirt. That's not actually exposed wire, but not a big fan of that. So we're going to clean that up, reinforce it a bit, and let me see what I can do about getting this out of here. Alright guys, I am now looking at this plug. You can see the shape on the back of it versus the holes on the front, how much it covers, all that clearly doesn't line up with what is on the old plug. So I mocked up on paper what the front would cover. And you can see it's not going to quite cover, even if we put it sideways. This paper is slightly bigger. I think I'll have a little gap at the bottom, but that's pretty close. Um, the problem being, if we try to go that direction, this is the back of the plug clearance that's needed to get through the hole. And as you can see, we've got metal in the way. So I'm going to have to cut out a little bit of metal here to make this work. And let's mark that up and see what we can do. I went ahead and marked it with a silver sharpie. Doesn't look like we need to take out much. Maybe I can just grind that out with my uh, rotary tool. Hopefully that's all I have to do. It's pretty thick metal though.
new plug fits. We have to drill some new holes for our screws. But like I worried about, I said that size on the previous hole was such that you're gonna have a gap. And there's my gap. So I might do some kind of faceplate, like a plastic faceplate or something behind this to expand on this. Let me see what I got. All right, so here I just had a thin piece of black plastic that I actually cut off of a spray can lid. Use my Dremel to shape it and it fits up nice against this as kind of a gasket. It's not the best solution in the world, but you know what, we're gonna make this work. So now if we put this in and we see it actually fills in pretty good. We got our two screw holes still, but that's about it. So that'll help with a little bit of splash protection if we ever get out and when it's wet. And I happen to have some of these screws and locking washer or locking nuts that I'm going to use on the back to attach this. Got a final look here with this port installed. You can see, still got the old screw holes, but it's not any bigger gap than what you've got with the cable running through for the motor. So that's uh, not a big deal to me. We've got that there. If you look on the inside, got the, the uh, nuts holding the screws on there. First things first, we're gonna shore up that part of the jacket that I said was worn. So we're gonna put some extra heat shrink over those areas. Now those are protected so that we don't get any kind of a weird short. I've cut the ends of that cable. I'm gonna cap these off with some heat shrink too so that those aren't exposed. We are not gonna use these charging wires because these go back into the controller and these are a really thin gauge. These are like 16, uh, maybe 18 gauge because it was designed for the sealed lead acid battery system. Um, the new charging cables that are coming are much thicker and you can see on the battery itself, they actually have dedicated charge connections which are that thicker wire as well. Um, thicker than the old charging cable. The really thick one on the battery here is for is for uh, power to the scooter. But um, we're going to charge directly into the battery here. The BMS that's on the battery should handle everything just fine, and we don't need to go through the controller. So those are all wrapped up in blue. Kind of give us an indication that those are not in use, so that we know. I folded them over, heat shrinked them. Those are dead cables for now. If we ever need them, they're still there. We can reconnect them to stuff, but they are protected and out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do is connect our new connector cable to the controller that's gonna be coming off of our battery. And so we're gonna have to remove this plug and replace it. And I was looking at this, this actually looks like it was cracked at some point. This is what connected to the battery before and you can see it is completely cracked. I'm guessing just from vibration and stuff in there. Um, but that is not good. So we're gonna rip this off of here and solder the new one together. One of the problems I've had, this is the first time, but this connector is so tight on this 12 gauge wire that the gel, which is the yellow part on this connector that is designed to melt and make it waterproof as a connection, uh, actually got caught on the ball of wire that I was trying to go over where I twisted them together and it came out the other end. So I had to snip it because it stretched out and shove it back in the wire uh, so that it will still melt where it's supposed to melt. So just something to note that those are not connected in place in any way. They melt and uh, will fall out if they get pushed on. So let's melt this one and keep going. Super cool to see on this, um, on the on the thicker gauge wire, you can really see where that solder ring disappeared as it melted into the strands of the wire. Um, on the smaller one, it was harder to see that because I think there's so much solder compared to how much wire was there. So this, I feel like, is a really good connection. Um, and you can see the yellow melted is a liquid-proof membrane, and they say give it a stretch test afterwards to make sure that it is solid, which it does not pull apart. So. Anything that's worth doing is worth overdoing. So I went ahead and did a second layer of heat shrink on top of that connector just in case. Gives us a little more insulation in case I melted through that connector while trying to get that solder to melt. Then we are for sure not going to have a short on that. And you can see here the solder has flowed into this connection as well, which is great. 
So we will go ahead and cover that one up. All right, so I got the cover back on. Um, I loosely bolted it in because the leads from the charger port are very, very short here, and I've got to figure out how to get those connected still. So I might need to take this off when I have to connect those so I didn't tighten it down all the way. One other thing to note is this Uber Scoot comes with a 40 amp fuse on the old battery. So this was kind of a weird system. They had uh, two wires running back to two separate 40 amp fuses, uh, which then went to the connector to the controller. Um, I'm taking this out as part of my system. Uh, I know I run the risk of not having a fuse in there that the battery, um, you know, for whatever reason could spike. Uh, the battery doesn't push voltage. It's gonna be the, the controller asking for it, but if the controller to ask for more than it can handle or something weird, um, we could potentially pop the controller and I'd have to replace that. So I get that that's a risk, but uh, I'm gonna see how that goes. That's something I'm gonna do. I don't always recommend that for everyone else. I think if I were to keep this in, I would have kept that connector on the controller. I would have connected this to that. And instead I would have soldered somehow these two red wires with the red wire on the new connector um, instead of doing just the one-on-one. -on -one. But with the type of connectors I've got for soldering, it's not gonna take two cables. Uh, so it only worked with one. So I decided to take the fuse out and we'll run it this way and see how it goes. Okay, I'm learning a little more about these connectors, that yellow gel that was getting stuck. If I just so slightly twist as I move over things, it helps it not get stuck on them. And then I can get that solder point right where I need it. I wanna show you really quick. This is a, just a little bit of heat. So you can see the heat shrink has sucked down to the cable on the side. So it's kind of pinching it in place. The yellow has not yet melted and the solder ring is clearly still intact. So I'm going to keep heating it, and then I'll show you the result. Hopefully I'm catching a camera right when it melts. And there you can see the liquid solder right there. Okay, fun update. Um, the stress test on that last one, even though it looked good, I, I think I stress tested and pulled it way too soon and it wasn't cooled off yet and it totally just disintegrated the rubber uh heat shrink pulled apart and the solder all came apart i think it wasn't even cooled off yet so definitely give it time to cool off before you try and test it all right i am all soldered in here i'm going to test the battery now that i have a connection so if i touch our contacts here 53.954 volts on a full charge actually. So they sent me a fully charged battery. Our 48 volts actually gonna be a 54 nominal uh, when it's fully charged, I believe. And then it will drift down from there. So cool, we have power. Right. Both our connectors on. Let's plug them together and see if our scooter works. Boom, that's what I wanna see. Now, I don't think the battery meter is going to be accurate. I could be wrong on this, but I think because we're not charging through the controller, I don't think that the battery meter is going to tell us anything anymore. I think it's just always going to be on when it has power and off when it's dead. So we'd actually have to get a separate battery meter that would measure the voltage coming off the battery to give us a better idea, and we'd have to wire that in separately. Not something I'm going to do today. But let's see if we get power to the, to the uh, drive here. Oh, yeah. Okay, all that's left to do now is to hook our charge cables together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we need to get, I'm gonna get some padding to put around this battery in here so it's not jostling around. It is smaller than the cavity. We've got some room, um, which is crazy because it is three times the range of the old battery, 10 pounds lighter, and we still have all this extra room, which is really cool. But I don't want to bounce around in this lithium. It is more prone to, uh, damage and we don't want to have a fire or anything crazy so i'm gonna get a little bit of foam to put under it i don't want to wrap it up it still has to breathe um it's gonna get hot you don't want this to overheat so uh we're gonna just give some on the sides and the bottom maybe just to give it some bounce protection and uh then we'll be good to go and i'll show you that when i'm done all right both our charge cables are hooked up i've unplugged the battery from the scooter so i've only got voltage now running back to our charge port i'm going to test that so if i check that I have 
53.9. There we go. Perfect connection. All right, let's get the padding in. I just used some of the packaging so that I get a shock absorber on the bottom and on the sides. And I will go ahead and put this down in there. If we lift up, there it is, all tucked away, nice and pretty. Got padding on the sides, on the bottom, still got breathability. Cables are out of the way. Got my extra heat shrink going through the grommet there. I'm gonna tighten down these and be done. Take it out for a test drive. Works great. Really happy to have it back.